All right. So what I want to do in section um, so 5.4, number 3, but I want to skip all the way to C. Let's do problem C till you get the hang of this. We'll do some others. Don't worry. The only difference between uh, this section and the next one is ones in degrees and ones in radians. So there's no difference in how you do the problem. It's just how you alter it to answer it. So. All right, and here we go. So problem C. Yeah, cosine squared plus cosine equals cosine 2x. <laughs> now, the, oh wait, first, I want to make sure you know what you're responsible for memorizing. So let's look at our colored sheet. All right, so everybody's looking at your colored sheet. And go ahead and just fold it right above the triangle. See the triangle picture there? Go ahead and fold it so you're only looking at this much of the sheet. We're going to have, instead of having a big chapter test, we're going to have two quests. And so that kind of splits the sheet. So you folded your sheet right above the triangle. Okay? You already have memorized these. The first eight and the first column. Those are already memorized. The other ones you need to memorize are the double angle identities. So if you look about where my finger is pointing right there, you will see cosine 2 theta, sine 2 theta, and tangent 2 theta. Those have to be memorized. The double angle identities. So sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, tangent 2 theta. Has to be memorized. Has to be memorized. Okay? Those three. You may cross off the ones with the negatives underneath the eight that you've already memorized. See them? See the four under the eight you've already memorized? You can cross those off. You're, I mean, you don't even need to put those on your note card when I can use them. So we've got the two that we the two blocks that we've memorized. We've got the ones we've crossed off. So the other ones which are essentially the u plus v, u minus v ones, and the half angle ones can go on a note card. All right, so you might want to be preparing that sometimes in your note card and writing down the ones that are u plus v and minus v and the ones that are half angles. Okay, so you've already memorized these eight. You've got three more to memorize now, right? And they're the ones actually that we're going to show up in, in, in some of today's projects. Are right, they clear on that? Oh. What? So sorry, Jason. Can you say you're we're crossing off the four underneath the eight on the first yes. column? Yes. Yes. And then you're keeping the all the plus and minus v's, uv's, and then you're you're also we have to memorize the two beta. The only ones you have to memorize are the two theta ones. Okay, the two theta ones. Yeah. And then we can also put on the note card the zero theta divided by two. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. Now we are going to solve this equation. And the directions on the earlier page are this. Now, all that does is tell me that I'm going to answer all the way around, and I have to answer in degrees. This is going to be a degrees answer. This is a problem. Even though they're all cosines and it looks like it's nice, it isn't. Because 2x is different than x. So the first thing you're going to want to do is replace that, okay? So look at your sheet because you don't have it memorized yet, but you will. What are you going to replace cosine 2x with? Cosine squared minus sine squared. Yeah. 
Now, when you look at it now, you might think, Mrs. Ford, you made it worse. Well, I haven't really, but it's still not good because what's wrong with it? Now we have signs in there. So we still have like two different things happening, right? Super luckily for us, we have not sign, but sign squared. And why am I so happy to see a sign squared? What is true about sign squared? Okay, so I know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, which means sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. So I can take that out and replace it with one minus cosine squared. So cosine squared plus cosine equals cosine squared minus one minus cosine squared. Okay, now let's clean things up a little bit. Does that look okay to everybody? All right, let's really clean it up now. Uh, do you see it's a quadratic equation? It's got squares in it. So why don't we get everything over on one side? It's set equal to zero. I'm gonna go back and erase the original problem. So if I move everything, I think I'll go that way. I'll subtract cosine squared, so I'm gonna be left with the cosine squared. <laughs> Subtract the cosine. <laughs> and subtract one. So I brought everything over to this side. Does that look okay? Did I do that right? What would I love to do at this moment? I would love to factor it. Crap, it doesn't factor. Do you see that, that it doesn't factor? This is like x squared minus x minus one. That's what I have, it doesn't factor. What do I do when I have quadratic equations that don't factor? I use the quadratic formula. Now, do not be fearful, people. You know the quadratic formula. You know that A is one, B is negative one, and C is negative one. The only thing different is, you're used to saying X equals negative B plus or minus and all that. Well, now it's cosine X equals. Um, what is the difference between the original and the original? Weren't there two of them on this side? I just erased it. Weren't there two of them on this side? Mm -hmm. So we didn't cancel one on the other side. Just equal sign. Well, these two didn't cancel. I had a two cosine squared on this side, and I had a cosine squared on this side. Yeah. So when I subtracted cosine squared, it left me with one over here. Two minus one. Okay. Right. These did not cancel, these combined. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so cosine x equals, here we go, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, clearly I'm gonna need a calculator to help me with this problem. That's fine. Let's clean that up, so cosine x equals, one plus or minus the square root of five. Oop, root five, I mean, yeah, the square root of five. So that's two answers. That's cosine x equals one plus root five over two, and cosine x equals one minus root five over two. do this? How do 
I find x if I know it's cosine? I know the cosine is that fraction. How do I, what? In, inverse cosine, that's exactly right, second cosine. Good job, Shania, second cosine. So here we go. I'm gonna second cosine that thing right there. So, actually, you know what? It might be easier, kids. I don't, do whatever you want, but it might be easier to do one plus the square root of five equals divided by two, and then second cosine that fraction. So you don't need quite so many parentheses. So I went ahead and put this in, and then second cosine that answer using my answer button. What happened? Did you get an error? So we don't have any solutions from that one. Let's try this one. One, oops, one minus square root five equals divided by two. Now I'm gonna second cosine that answer. Did you get an answer that time? What'd you get? Hundred and twenty eight. Yep. Now this is a negative number. We didn't talk about that. This is a negative number. Right? And the fact that it's negative means whatever answers you get have to be over here. Would you agree? This is a cosine problem. So the one you just found is not that. The one you just found is 128.17. Does everybody understand why it can't be that angle right there? Can you put 128 in that right triangle? No, that wouldn't make any sense. You actually found this angle because you put the negative in, which is how it came out. You didn't put it in, it came out that way. Mm -hmm. And then I need the other answer. How in the world am I going to figure out the other one? One of them is right there, 128.17. How am I going to find the other one? It's right here. How am I going to find that? A couple of different options. Get creative. May? Can we figure out? We can subtract 128 and find this one? Yeah, and then there aren't they? Well, I forgot what they're mm -hmm. called. Angles. Reference angles, yep. Yeah, they're the same. Uh huh. And then add whatever you got is 180. That's a, that, that is a perfect strategy. So she says, let's go ahead and find the reference angle, which would be 51. 0.83, which I know this one's also 51.83. Mm -hmm. So then I can do 180 plus that and get my other answer, which is 231.83. That is a marvelous strategy. There is another way. You may think of another way, or is everybody good with this one? If you're good with this one, that's good. This is wonderful. Like, uh, huh? Like the other I don't want to go there. Let's stick with this. This is a hard enough problem. This is a hard problem. You've had to endure about everything you can in this problem. Um, that one didn't work. Got an error message on the calculator. So luckily this one did work and we've got our two answers. Great. You did a great job with that. That's a tough one. All right, let's look at 4A. It's kind of the same, but I think it's going to be a lot easier. And notice that it is in radians, which means nothing at this point. So I'm not worrying about it yet. At the end, I'll have to figure out what my radian measures are. But right now, I'm just going to do my best to solve the equation. So what do you think might be the first step to solving this equation? Change there to x. Yep. 
and it's a cosine again, so the cosine of 2x is Sine squared minus sine squared, yep. And isn't the same thing happening that happened before? So what did we do before to kind of fix this a little bit? We changed sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared. And I'll just give you a heads up. You do that a lot. In fact, your sheet says cosine 2x equals cosine squared minus sine squared. And that is the main one. But you can see when I fix this, that's going to become 2 cosine squared minus 1. And it's 1 minus 2 sine squared. So since these two are replaceable by the other one, Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared, and cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. These can all, this can always be rewritten either this way or this way. You don't have to memorize those unless you want to, but know that this is usually, in most problems, this is going to be rewritten, either in terms of cosines, which is what we've done, or in terms of sines, if that's what we wanted to do. Right, that's what we're going to get here, because we're going to have our cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. So do you see right here, there's that 2 cosine squared minus 1 I was talking about. It's going to happen all the time. So what have I got now in my equation? I've got two cosine squares plus cosine minus one. Now this is right back where we were a minute ago. The difference is that factors. Now, could you use the quadratic formula if you were comfortable with what we did a minute ago? Absolutely. You can always use the quadratic formula. But this one does factor. So when I factor it, Um, let's see, this will be plus 1, minus 1, is that right? Double check it. Yep. So if that's easier for you, great. If it's not, use the quadratic formula. And you're going to get that the cosine is 1 half, or the cosine is negative 1. The quadratic formula will give you that very same thing if you, you know, work it all out. Now, I gotta pay attention. I am in radians now. So I'm gonna figure out where is the cosine a positive one half? Cosine. One and four. Yep, one and four. So I don't even need a calculator for this because one half, I know that angle is how big? Across from the root three, 60. Now, I'm, I'm not supposed to be using degrees. So 60 is pi over three. 60 is a third of 180, so it's pi over three. So my two answers are pi over 3, what's the other one? What's the big green one going to be? 5 pi over 3. So those two answers are 1 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 because the big green angle is all the way around, which is two pi, except for this third right here. So that's how we got five thirds. All right, what about this? Cosine negative one. What am I gonna do with that? Now think about it for a second. 
Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Can you have a triangle, forget the quadrant, can you have a triangle where adjacent and hypotenuse are both one? That ain't gonna work, is it? So if the triangle isn't going to work, then what do I do? I look at my unit circle, yep. And what do I need to have happen? I need cosine, which is x, to be negative 1. Where does that happen? Where is x negative 1? Right here? What angle is that? Pi. And that's the only place, so that's the only answer, and that's it. That one was a lot easier, I think. I don't know. Okay? Now, I want you to look at sections three and four. I've done one problem from each, and I want to do another one. So tell me which problem you would like to do from sections three and four that I haven't already done. What looks interesting to you? Shall we do one with a sign? We haven't done any with a sign yet. Mm -hmm. So you want to do 4B? Yeah. While we're right here. All right. So look at 4B. What do you think is going to be a smart way to start? Yeah. So we don't want, we, we cannot do a problem with a 2X and an x in it. So I'll say that again. You can't do the problem if there's a 2x and an x, all right? So you got to change one of them. And the obvious choice is this one because you're going to memorize a formula that will change that for you. So what's the sine of 2x? 2 sine cosine. Okay, so now we've got this. <coughs> Now, it's still not perfect for sure, but at least we have all X's now. Okay, what's your thought? Sam, this is invigorating. Come on, man. And why do you have shorts on? Well, it's not allowed. Do you have some pants in your backpack? Or would you put them on, please? Does anyone have a thought on how we might proceed with the problem? Yeah, Jack? Pardon me? Okay, now, yes, we're going to bring that two side over to the other side. And then what are we going to do, Jack? That is absolutely magnificent. And what are we going to do now? Factor. Now we're going to factor because... As soon as we subtracted that over, now we notice both terms have a two sign. So two sign, pulling that out, what will I have left if I factor out a two sign? I'll have cosine x minus one. Don't forget the minus one there to hold that place. Now what? What do I do after I factor? Set them both equal to zero. So this one's going to say 2 sine x equals zero, which means sine x equals zero. You divide the two out, so we're not hung up about the two. And then this says cosine equals one. Right? I think we just talked about this one, except it was a negative one. But didn't we agree that this had to be on the circle? Yeah. Because adjacent and hypotenuse can't match. <coughs> so this is on the circle. Well, I got my circle right here. I'll use the same circle. Where is the cosine going to be one? Where is the cosine one? Isn't it right there? 
So we call that zero, whether we're in radians or degrees. So one of my answers is zero. Now, what about this one? Sine zero. Doesn't that also happen on the circle? So look around the circle. Where does the sine, which is y, equal zero? Zero and pi? We don't write your answer twice. You've already got zero written down, so we'll just add pi to the list. Why don't we do two times zero? Um, the directions are almost always written so that zero is included but two pi isn't because it's considered redundant. So zero and two pi are basically the same angle. So you don't want to write it twice. Now, if you had something where that was included, then yes, anytime you put down zero, you'd also say two pi. I don't think that's, yeah, I didn't have it that way on here. Okay? All right, um, I'm going to do a couple more, and then if we have time, we'll make up another equation and do it. We've done these equations before. Uh, the difference is now you've got the 2x to deal with, but I think you know how to do that. That's easy enough. All right, let's look at number five. These are easy. But we got to take it a step at a time. There's a lot going on in this problem. All this is the given. Does it? Yep, we're on number part five now. Part five. There's a lot of given here. So before I even look at the problem, I'm going to draw a picture of angle alpha, starting with alpha, which you can call A if you'd rather. This tells me where to draw alpha. What does this mean? Quadrant two. So I'm going to draw my alpha in quadrant two, and then I know that the sine is three fifths. So opposite over hypotenuse is three fifths. So what do you think I'll probably do before I move on to beta? Pythagorean theorem. So 25 minus 9. So this is negative 4. Don't forget the negative because you're in quadrant 2. Would everybody agree that's a good picture of alpha? All right, what about beta? Where am I going to draw beta? 4? Quadrant 4? And I know the cosine is 5 thirteenths, so adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I'll do the Pythagorean theorem again. <coughs> so 169 minus 25 is 144, so this is negative 12. Now, all that's the given. I haven't even started the problem yet. Let's get down and do C. Cosine 2 theta. So all that's, that's what I'm going to use to find the cosine of 2 alpha. I mean, the cosine of 2 alpha. So what do you think I might do to start? What's What's the cosine of 2 theta, or 2 alpha? Cosine squared minus sine squared? Well, wait a minute. Do I know the cosine of alpha? The cosine of alpha is negative 4 fifths, and I have to square it. And do I know the sine of alpha? 3 fifths, and I have to square it. Can I figure this out? This is easy. This is easy. So it's 16 25ths minus 9 25ths. So I think the answer is 7 25ths. So it took me longer to draw a picture of the given than it did to actually do the problem. That was pretty easy. Uh, 
I'm not going to do B. You want to do A or B? B? The tangent. Oh, I can't erase any. I'm going to have to erase this. So the tangent of alpha minus beta. Okay. This is on our note card. You do not need to memorize this one. So look on your sheet. What, what is our formula for tangent alpha minus beta? Tan alpha minus tan beta over Perfect. That's one of your u plus v things, or in this case, u minus v. There's some indifference identities. So here we go. Plug and chug. What's the tangent of alpha? Negative 3 fourths. What's the tangent of beta? 12 fifths. Now I changed that because it was minus a negative. over one plus tangent alpha, tangent beta. I didn't mean to take attendance, are we all here today? I feel like we're all here. We gotta finish this problem, do not get excited yet. I feel like we're all here. Because I got some out here. Okay. All right, so here we go. Now, quick comment. I know you can cancel some stuff here. Don't, you'll see why in a minute. Just, just leave it, don't do any extra work. Negative 3 fourths plus 12 fifths over one plus double negative 36 twentieths. 36 twentieths. We talked about these a lot the other day. These are called complex fractions. You can simplify it any way you want, but I'm gonna multiply the whole shebang by 20 because that's the common denominator. And look what happens when I do that. It's so easy. I would recommend this method. The four cancels and leaves me with negative 15 the five cancels and leaves me with plus 48. Nothing cancels, so I have 20. 20s cancel, plus 36. See how easy that is? And I don't have to do a thing with the fractions. I don't have to add them, subtract them, nothing. <coughs> and now I know my answer is 33 over 56. All right, next time we're together, we'll do some review.